Well, hello and welcome to today's virtual roundtable. I'm Russ Holmes of Vcant and I'll be your host for this session. This is an incredibly hot topic of the day at the moment. Uh, top five ways on how to prepare your onboard medical facility for restart. I know we're all going through the same thing. And the good thing is Vcand is here to support you. Before I introduce my colleague, I did want to let you know that your camera is turned off. So if you sat watching, watching us with your PJs on, we can't see you. Also, your microphone is off, but we do want to hear from you. This is not just a session where my colleague and I can have a great conversation. This is actually your session. So we want to hear from you. So in the control bar on the right hand side of your screen, or if you move it somewhere else, you will find a questions box. Feel free to drop some questions in there as we go through this session. Uh, we're planning for around 30 minutes, but if we have a lot of questions, we can go on a little bit longer if needed. Because uh, again, at the end of the day, we want to be, to be able to answer your questions. So feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to some of those towards the end of our session uh, today. Also, uh, there is a chat function as well. We've got people logging in from all over the world, both on land and at sea. So if you are on land, let us know where you're logging in from. If you're at sea or on board a ship in port, let us know the name of the vessel. We'd love to hear from you. What I want to do now is introduce my colleague to you, uh, Robert Wentworth. He is our Senior Director of Biomedical Operations. Welcome, Robert. Great to have you join us today. Good morning, Russ. Thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. I'm looking forward to sharing a lot of wealth and information to everybody. And as Russ mentioned, I'd love to uh, have you comment on where you're from and uh, what ship you may be on. Most of you I might have seen on one of my passings on board your vessel. So uh, good morning, good evening, and look forward to helping you out. Thank you, Robert. Um, just want to, there are quite a few people on the line that may not be familiar with VCAND. So who is VCAND? If you want to go to the next slide, please. VCAND are the leading medical and public health solutions provider to the global maritime industry. Today's session is mainly focused on the cruise industry, but VCAND works in all of the other verticals from commercial shipping, private islands, mega yachts, ferries, oil and gas, um, and, and all of the other fisheries as well. And so um, we're uh, looking forward to today's discussion. Uh, we want to get into the top five ways. We're going to dig right into it. Uh, so, Robert, um, what I'd like to do is, is throw some questions your way and uh, look forward to the discussion. On the first side, we've got biomedical equipment and preventative maintenance. Obviously, a, a key topic. So, what is preventative maintenance and why should it be important? Yeah, great question, Russ. So essentially, it's all about risk management and patient safety. And we look at pay, uh, preventative maintenance as just making sure that medical device is performing optimally the way the manufacturer designed it to perform. Uh, you could think of it as changing the oil in your vehicle. You do that to prolong the life of your vehicle. And we do that with medical equipment. We want to make sure it's cleaned, Everything is functioning correctly, it's calibrated, uh, and we also start looking for signs of wear and tear so that we can correct those minor issues now so they don't turn into a large risk or a more expensive repair down the road. Which is absolutely essential at this point in time. You know, previously, pre-pandemic, you know, the, the healthcare biomed side of the house was kind of put to one side. Now with the pandemic, everything is front and center in the public health uh, side of it. So the, so the preventative maintenance side, you know, you and your team, this is coming front and center, is such a critical area as, as the cruise ships start to restart operations. And so with that, uh, kind of a follow-on question on the same topic there, uh, Robert, does, the, uh, does equipment have to be sent to VCAND or can this be done on board ship? Yeah, so we're very flexible in how we operate. So we've got teams of engineers that are spread out and we come on board your ship and we do the service on board your ship. Perhaps uh, your vessel is smaller, you only have a couple of items, maybe you're laid up right now and you don't have any crew on board. You wanna send those in to us, have us go ahead and do those shore side, maybe it's more cost effective than sending someone out. We also do mail-in service where we can take care of that in our repair facility. 
Uh, the other thing that comes across on this is maybe you're purchasing enhancement equipment. Maybe you want that verified by VCAN before it makes it from the vendor um, onto your ship where you procure through VCAN. We go ahead and do those services and then forward the equipment onto your vessel. So we're very flexible in how we do that. So I feel honored today to actually have you here online with us because you normally, you and your team, they're on, you're on board ships all the time, you know, yeah. taking care of our clients. So appreciate that. Uh, moving on to the next topic uh, are the top five ways, and this would be repairs and corrective actions. So what happens when a device doesn't pass an inspection or it's reported as not functioning correctly by any of the medical staff members on board? Yes, yeah, so if a device is uh, reported to us and one of the few ways that they can report to us, uh, we generally kind of start creating a help desk ticket and then go forward with some remote troubleshooting, try to identify the root cause of the issue and identify one, is it economically repairable? And two, what's the best way to repair that equipment? So we have a few ways of handling that that can be found during the PM visits where we say, oh, you know, this, this device isn't working correctly. Most of the time we have the small parts on hand, we can fix it right away, get the machine back up and working correctly. If it's more deep than that, then we will utilize a uh, chain of command and follow process to either evac that equipment off the ship to where it can be repaired, or maybe we just order a part and send it and, and liaison with onboard IT or onboard engineers, and we'll get the electrical or mechanical engineers involved and we'll walk them through the repair process as well. Wow, incredible service there that you're offering to each of our clients. I did want to remind the audience of the attendees today, you can ask any questions to Robert or I, please use the chat function or the questions function in the toolbar. We really want to hear from you. This is your session. And so we look forward to, to getting to some of your questions towards the end of this morning's session. So do you, you mentioned uh, the mail-in uh, service. Tell a little bit more about that. Yeah, so if you would prefer to mail in something or we find it more feasible to mail it in, uh, one program we offer is some of our clients have spare medical equipment that we house and maintain at our facility. So in that event, we would actually dispatch out one of your spare devices to that vessel and assist you in the offloading of the defective device where we would receive it in and, and either if we have to coordinate with the manufacturer or we do the repair ourselves. we'll go ahead and do that repair and then load that back onto your spare shelf. So we just rotate equipment on and off. If you don't have a spare device, we can assist you with getting a spare device. Um, and if, uh, if you don't need a spare device and you just need that fixed and returned right back, we can expedite that and get back to you pretty quickly. So what you're trying to say really is, uh, you know, it's our commitment to each of our clients is that you have as little downtime as possible with any piece of equipment because of all the different array of services that we can provide to support them. Yes. So I want to move on to our next uh, topic, enhancements and medical equipment upgrades. You know, this is a key area at the moment. Everything tends to be connected in some way, shape or form. A lot of software upgrades needed. So what are some things to be mindful of? when using equipment which may have been in storage or not used for a while? Well, if the ship's been in, in either warm layup or in a cold layup. Yeah, so I think uh, sometimes we forget about these little details. Uh, so just as little reminders, uh, when you're pulling equipment that may have been disconnected from shipboard power for a while at uh, you know, one reason or another, you want to always verify that the batteries in that equipment are re really fully charged. Um, we all know batteries don't last forever, so maybe it's a great idea to just start replacing batteries. The other thing that we look at is there's been software upgrades uh, by certain manufacturers. Some of these are every six months. Some have just came up um, because they create a new software features for a device due to the COVID outbreak. So we want to help you with your software updates, any battery replacement accessories that you may need, those sort of things uh, to be mindful of. Okay, and so what, what should medical centers ensure or how should uh, medical centers ensure they have the right equipment for the environment? Bear in mind, most of the ships keep relocating, particularly at this point in time, um, and uh, you know, positioning parts of the world where they may have not operated before. Yeah, so we work with our clients to help them set par levels, uh, and those par levels may fluctuate. It could fluctuate based on itinerary, demographics of patients. So we'll work with them to kind of help them set those standards. 
Uh, the other thing is there's been a lot of changes in medical equipment. Uh, maybe some folks had some older stuff and they said, you know, it's time we, we go ahead and use a CapEx plan. We can help you develop a CapEx and start cycling out some of the old things to get the new equipment with a larger set of parameters for better monitoring. Uh, when we do that, sometimes you might need to new accessories or new consumables. You might have uh, ventilator A on the left, and it uses a different patient circuit for this new ventilator that you're getting. So we want to keep those things in mind as well. Uh, as you come back returning to service, that we're here to support you with any consulting you need. Uh, we can provide you guidance on a medical device, whether it's fit for the environment based on the electrical requirements, or vibration requirements, the durability of that device. Uh, so we're here uh, to help you through any of those challenging questions you may have. That's brilliant and great support um, because it literally, you know, there's so much variations in, in, in equipment and software upgrades and so forth. So it's great that we're a, a resource here in supporting each of our clients. I want to move on to formulary, um, aside from the, from the biomedical equipment side of it, because that's another key area, and certainly through, uh, in, through these restarts, formulary is one of those key areas. So when it comes to consumables and formulary items, what should medical staff be focusing on in particular? Yeah, great question, Russ. So a lot of times, uh, the questions that are thrown at us are, do we have the right consumable item for this product? And do we, do we need this item? So one of the biggest things to keep in mind is, A, what is the expiration date on your lots? I think ships right now are doing a great job of keeping an inventory of what they have and monitoring those expiration dates. Um, where I think maybe we could assist a little more in is providing options for them. Maybe they have uh, a formulary this wide, but we could help them tailor that down uh, to control costs. Uh, as you upgrade equipment, maybe the old equipment you needed some of these other things that you no longer need on board, and we can help you kind of push those out to, to focus on that. Um, but overall, you know, I think, I think formulary is a big thing outside of just the medical equipment. You've got medicines and all those other things to kind of focus on as well. And we have a great medical management team here at Weekend outside of biomedical, and they're also available to assist with all of the other aspects of formulary management. I suppose as ships have been on layout for so long, uh, and now's the time, perfect time, to start going through all of the formulary items, checking those as, uh, you know, uh, end of use dates, and making sure we have a good clear out, uh, and then a restock as well, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And certainly Beacons can assist you with that. I wanted to move on to our final topic, and I did want to remind our attendees today, you can ask any questions to Robert or I. Please use uh, the questions function in the toolbar. We'd love to hear some of those questions from yourself, and we'll hopefully get to some of those in a moment. As we move into this last area of these top five ways, the ongoing biomedical equipment support. And so why is it important to have a source for ongoing support? Yeah, it's, it's very important. You never know when a device is going to fail. Uh, I wish we did. I wish devices kind of gave you pre-alerts, but right now it doesn't really happen. So. We try to catch that during that preventive maintenance plan. Um, if it doesn't show up or, you know, just a, a random fault happens, we're there to support you with that. Uh, we, can, we can take web requests via our portal. Um, we communicate with our emergency biomedical line. It's, run, it's operated man 24 hours a day. And also via email, uh, we have lots of eyes and ears sitting there on email to just check for those coming through. And it's important to have this because Sometimes uh, you get a device that's going to fail, and in a global operation, you don't know when, where, how that's going to be, and, and we're there to support you, and, and as I said earlier, send you out a, a loaner piece of medical equipment or walk you through the repair of that equipment on board so that you can be up and running and be able to cruise without any concerns. And so you, you, we discussed different ways of, of you and your team going on board, We've also discussed the, the mailing service that VCAN provides to our clients, but do we offer any type of remote technical support? Absolutely. We do a lot of remote technical support. Our team is manufactured, trained uh, across the variety of products. Uh, we provide information back and forth, as we mentioned earlier, 
uh, communicating and, and pulling in onboard engineers and walking them through the diagnosis and the repair of that device in the event we can't get out to your vessel or it's just something small and simple, but maybe you just don't know how to do it. Uh, we're very swift in responding and getting some technical support out to you. That's great service that we're providing there. And so I'm just coming kind of into the final question here. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about, you know, maintaining the equipment, but uh, what happens uh, if you determine that a part is required uh, to resolve the issue? Yeah, if a part's required, we'll dispatch a part out to your vessel. We've got a great logistics team here at VCAN. We work with our clients and their logistics partners, and we'll send those out through port agent or whatever the means are necessary to get that part on board so that you can be up and operational again with that device. Okay. I want to remind our attendees again, uh, feel free to use the chat function. We'll get to those in a second. Uh, we've got the first question coming in through here. Uh, how do we manage all of the device assets and, and the maintenance data that VCAN has? Yeah, so we utilize a, uh, it's, it's an asset management and maintenance program, and it's been custom tailored not only for biomedical engineering, but specifically down to the maritime industry. Uh, so we actually manage all of not just the maintenance of it, but the asset. We can manage where it is at any given time and where it needs to go and kind of move that through the system. So if you have a sister ship alongside and you need to transfer something over to that, we can simply also follow that record. Uh, we keep records for as long as the equipment is alive and then beyond. Uh, if a machine comes and we at one stage say it's not economically repairable, it doesn't mean the history disappears. We keep that history. So in a future event that may occur, we have that to provide. Uh, we also use the data to help formulate uh, OPEX and CAPEX uh, cycles so that we can help you with risk management, life cycle replacements. We monitor recalls through this system. So it's a very in-depth system. And uh, we'd love to show it to you sometime and, and show you how we manage all of these operations. Incredible. And so we, we've got some questions coming in now uh, from the attendees. As I say, feel free to use the question uh, field in the uh, toolbar on, the, on your screen. I uh, would love to answer some of your questions. But when you're on board for the preventative maintenance, how do you ensure you're capturing all the equipment that requires maintenance? These ships are huge for some of them. Yes. Yeah, so we focus on the medical equipment and we focus more or less on a priority so we're looking at the higher risk items first ventilators defibrillators aeds and and we start going through all of that we do a full sweep through the medical center we can we discuss it with the medical team on board we ask them you know do you have a secondary medical center where you may have a few items stored uh, do you keep any aeds located throughout the ship that we need to go to that location and verify that some of our clients actually have us also check the AED cabinet that the AED itself is sitting inside of to make sure the alarm on that is working. So uh, we consult very well with our clients. And if it's not something we typically service, if it's something the client wants serviced and it's medical, biomedical related, well, we don't say no. So we're welcome to service anything you feel that you may want serviced. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if we've got any more questions coming in. I'll just leave the, the chat open there for a few more moments. As I said, we're all webinared out, so we want, certainly wanted to keep this session brief, um, but also provide the pertinent information that you're looking for to, to support you as you plan your restarts. If you are looking for more solutions beyond Biomed, or you want more information on the Biomed side of the house uh, and how VCAN could support you, I know we do have quite a few people on the line that aren't current clients of ours, and we'd love to be able to support you in any way that we can. Please go to vcand.com, or at the bottom of your screen at the moment, you'll see my email address and actually my cell phone number as well. Feel free to reach out. We'd love to be able to answer any questions that you may have or provide more information on VCAN's services and solutions. We are here to support you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert. Thank Any you. last comments from yourself before we leave today? Nothing from yourself, Robert? Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Robert and his team look forward to seeing many of you on board your ships in the very near future. 
I know they're incredibly busy helping you plan your restarts. But again, thank you for joining us today. And if you need more information at all, please go to vcand.com.